Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. So welcome to the USA or Texas or Circuit of Americas, whichever you want to call it. Try guide and set up. So uh, we resume where we left off. We are finally uh, caught up with the real life Grand Prix and a uh, very technical track here, right? Sector one and sector three, all high speed and slow speed corners. Sector two is just a few straights and you're going to be needing a lot of downforce around here and uh, a lot of technique to gain some lap time. So very quickly, thank you to all the channel members and sus subscribers of the channel, my words, for su uh, supporting us uh, in the best way possible. Let's get into the track guide first, followed by the setup after that and a full speed hot lap at the end. Now, um, well, regardless of how you start your lap, whether you drive out or go to track by AI, uh, you wanna be starting your lap by going a little wide here at the start finish line if it's only for qualifying right if it's race just race normally um, by taking a wider line you carry a little bit more speed into turn one which is an uphill corner which you want to be looking for that black box on the right or there's the white line on the ground but it's a little bit faded so that's going to be your braking reference and uh up till here uh, for a very last moment, that's when you're going to be seeing the apex. You can take it or you can just drive around it, but be close to the curb, right? And uh, as long as you get a clean and straight exit, that is going to be very beneficial for you. And for turn two here, stay to the right. Take a lot of the inside curb here. It's going to give you some lap time by minimizing track distance. Once you see that top bridge, turn to the left, take a lot of the curb. This is going to set up the entire sector one for, for you. If you mess this up, the rest of your sector is gone. Same for turn the next turn here in the S section. Take a lot of the curb. Again, the third part of the S section. Take the entire curb. Maybe downshift to fifth and uh, lift a little bit. The next right-hander. Uh, miss the entry a little bit. Uh, go wide. And then cut back in for this treat it like a double apex basically now you cut back and uh, keep your car straight as possible and once you see that green astro turf on the right that's going to be your turning in point for the next left hander just downshift and lift a little bit again cut a lot of the curb here and try to be as left as possible which will allow you to open up the next right hander so just downshift and uh, break a little bit and uh, Take as much curb as possible once again. The car will feel a little bit unstable, but once you get used to it, you're going to gain a lot of time out of here. The next left hander uphill, cut a lot of it. This is pretty much on the track limits. And uh, play around with the throttle to keep the car stable and minimize track distance everywhere. Now running down into the first heavy braking zone here, before the back straight, uh, you want to be breaking around 75 meters or 70 meters or so and uh, breaking the straight line and trail break into the corner make sure you prioritize the exit you can take a little bit of that inside curb here or you can totally avoid it now it's important to make sure your steering wheel is straight take a look at mine it's not so straight and you're going to be seeing why is that so important we get a little bit of a tank slap on the exit and that's definitely half a tenth loss on the straight here uh, but otherwise keep your car straight minimize the track distance stay to the right hand side and uh, you want the spot between 150 and 100 meter board around where that um, black box is on the right the ea f124 box and now this is where you have to once again play with the track limits cut a lot of this curb to minimize track distance on the exit use all the curb available and then bring the car over to the left hand side and now there's no real reference here for the next turning but if you see that little marshal on the walls at the side that's my braking reference basically uh, so you have to find your own whatever is comfortable to you and stay tight on the entry without touching that orange sausage curb keep the steering as straight as possible and apply power as soon as possible now for this double left hander, uh, just when you're about to pass the curb on the left or you see this little kink on the right hand side curb, I aim my car towards it and then just slowly brake 
trail break into the corner just light breaking and as soon as you hit the apex here or you before even you hit that pick up the throttle as soon as possible stay to the middle of the track before this triple right hander and that will help you to stay tight and gain time throughout these long long right hander corners and finally two corners to go very easy to invalidate here look for the black box on the top right that's gonna be your turning in point downshift if you need to I prefer to avoid taking the entire curb because it unsettles the car sometimes and uh, but on the exit use all the exit curb available and now for the final corner spot the black box on the right or on the left you can see the bollard uh, where the pit entry line starts that is going to be your breaking point and take a lot of the inside curb here including that orange sausage and there you go take all the exit curb on the exit of the last corner and that's going to be a quick run to the line for a lap around circuit of the americas okay now that we are done with that uh, hot lap thingy uh, with the track guide let's get into the setup for this track and I've, as i've mentioned earlier it's a very high downforce track higher than you usually think right and um, of course let's save the setup first before we forget uh, yeah and now the setup 50 45 on the wings this is the highest downforce i'm going for and quite frankly this is also my race setup i prefer to go with it but if you want low downforce you can go about three clicks or five clicks lower accordingly whichever you prefer uh, but if it's going to be dry all the way you know either of it it's going to work for you right uh, so try around and see which is faster for you obviously lower downforce is easier to overtake and defend in the race transmission i'm using 90 for sector 3 everywhere else i'm using 80 but again personal preference you can use 80 90 or 100 at any corner try out and see at different corners off throttle 10 percent for qualifying to give you maximum rotation and in the race you want to run about 20 or 25 so it's a little bit more stable with the harder tires and then engine braking at 100 is the fastest way to regenerate more battery uh, but you can drop it to 90 or 80 if you feel a little bit unstable in the race uh, minimum camber and tow uh, is the same for every track and now we move on to suspension and once again because we are running very low wing gap here there's only five extra front wing right so there's going to be a bit of understay in the car to generate more front grip you need to soften the front suspension so i'm using about 36 it is still considered stiff but it's soft enough to give you more grip and uh, because there's a lot of uh, undulation here a lot of elevation change uh, you need a little bit of higher front right height to stop the car from bottoming out especially in the sector one as it's going uphill same for the rear uh, you want it a little bit stiffer but still in the soft range so you can absorb the curbs and still be stable in high speed 55 rear right height is i think about the sweet spot for me obviously you can go higher if you need a little bit more stability but you're going to lose a uh, real downforce there a uh, front end hero bar at 21 is to keep it stable uh, you can drop it maybe to 19 or 18 if you need a bit more front grip but it's going to make the car a little bit more unstable uh, if you can handle it go for it and the rear you can soften it a little bit if the car snaps on the exit uh, this will help you to reduce oversteer brakes 100 percent brake pressure as usual and 54 brake bias um, you can even use 53 54 55 it's a personal preference from corner to corner and then if it's a mixed condition race I definitely recommend trying out 98 or 99 percent uh, brake pressure so that you reduce the chances of locking up in the rain in the dry you don't really feel much difference between 98 99 and 100 unless you're at esports level and maximum tire pressures for the race and qualifying to reduce overheating if it's going to be raining though uh, all the way for example in the race just go for 50 50 wings and you'll be guaranteed to be safe and then uh, you will need a little bit more grip on the front but you can you know just drive a little slower you can reduce the on throttle a little bit and uh, yeah you can increase the rear right height to 60 and front right height to 24 so plus two on the front plus five on the rear 
I find it to be a good compromise uh, for a mixed condition setup. And there you go. Uh, that is the setup for Kota. And uh, I will leave you with a full speed hot lap after this. See you in Mexico. Bye bye.